Following the initial Covenant invasion of Earth that began on October 20th, 2552, a lengthy campaign began in Eastern Africa as the Covenant attempted to secure key locations surrounding the Portal to the Ark. One such strategic location was the once port city of Voy, which now found its nearby lake drained into the vast chasm carved above the portal. In the days after the initial Covenant attack on New Mombasa, which occurred on the 20th, assaults were carried out across many cities, including Voy, which quickly fell under an assault by Covenant ground forces. UNSC forces in the area were forced back, but not forced out of Voy, with a small pocket of UNSC defenders still holding out in the center of a large industrial complex along what was once the lakefront. As the massive chasm drained the water from the lake, leaving various ships stranded in the area, and the large-scale excavation project now underway becoming more and more apparent, the Covenant dug in around the city. Realizing the strategic importance of the airspace over the artifact, as it would be really the only way humans could assault the Covenant forces preparing to depart for the Ark, a massive air defense network was set up around the area, with the center of this network being set in the city of Voy. Most notably, the Covenant set up a T-72 Mantis heavy surface-to-air cannon, which provided the backbone for the anti-capital ship capability of the ground forces in Voy. So as the Covenant dug in around Voy, UNSC forces regrouped and recovered the Master Chief and began preparing for a counterattack on the city. In the coming battle, the objectives of UNSC forces would be to simply clear out the air defense to allow a UNSC naval force to strike at the Covenant fleet, preparing to venture through the portal. Meanwhile, on the Covenant side, they sought to prevent a UNSC attack from neutralizing their air defenses and protect the Covenant fleet formed over the portal to the Ark. So, on November 17th, 2552, UNSC forces surged out from the ruins of their base at Crow's Nest and began advancing down the Savo Highway towards Voy. Knowing that the Savo Highway would be the main assault point for UNSC forces, which had been based in the nearby jungles, the Covenant had reinforced the highway with large numbers of Covenant heavy armored units. However, UNSC armor, as well as a large push by UNSC infantry, led by the Master Chief, were able to clear out a path along the highway towards the industrial city. This, however, did alert Covenant forces within the city of Voy that UNSC forces were on the way, and once UNSC forces had reached the gates of the city, the Covenant defenders were more than ready for a fight. The UNSC forces that entered the city primarily consisted of infantry led by Petty Officer John 117, the Master Chief, and a number of light armored units, most notably Warthogs and Mongies, as well as a few transport variant Warthogs carrying infantry. However, it quickly became clear that much of this fight would be on foot, as the coastal regions of the city were broken up by large factory complexes that didn't allow for the effective use of large armored units. As such, it became a series of infantry battles as UNSC infantry surged from building to building and factory to factory, clearing out Covenant defenders. As they neared the center of the coastline, however, they found a more pressing issue. The Covenant had set up a number of anti-air units along the coast, not the heavy anti-air units, the T-72s, intended for engaging capital ships, but instead a number of T-52 anti-air wraiths, which were able to effectively suppress any UNSC reinforcements that would be delivered via Pelicans. As such, the chief priority of the assaulting UNSC forces was to eliminate these wraiths to allow the delivery of additional UNSC air forces. On top of this, the UNSC forces were dealing with heavy armor that had been dropped off in the area, a number of conventional T-26 wraiths. All the while, Banshees deployed from the Prophet of Truth's fleet were being used to harass the advancing UNSC forces, making it harder for them to seize the city. However, these efforts generally proved ineffective as UNSC forces advanced from factory to factory, nearing the besieged UNSC troops that had been holding out envoys since the beginning of the Battle of Earth. In a final effort to prevent the UNSC offensive forces from being able to regroup with the besieged troops within the city, a number of Type 47B Scarabs were deployed to the city. These Scarabs quickly mounted an assault against the advancing UNSC forces. However, the advancing UNSC forces had managed to reach the defensive perimeter set up by the troops that had been stranded in the city, and utilized their heavy armament, most notably missile pods, to disable the advancing heavy armor. With the Scarabs destroyed, UNSC forces were able to link up with the troops within the heart of the city and carry out an assault on the defensive position surrounding the T-72 heavy anti-air cannon. This assault primarily consisted of UNSC infantry forces, once again led by the Master Chief, as they surged down the peninsula towards the cannon's position. After wiping out the Covenant infantry that had been dispatched to defend the cannon, they were able to destroy the weapon with carefully placed small arms fire and fragmentation grenades. With the cannon's destruction, a hole was opened in the Covenant's air defense network surrounding the portal to the Ark, and UNSC forces were able to 
surge through, carrying out an assault against the site that had been used to open the portal. However, this UNSC assault came far too late. The Prophet of Truth was able to open the portal, and his fleet was able to proceed toward the Ark, leaving UNSC forces in the area stunned and confused just in time for the arrival of the Flood. Ultimately, the Battle of Oi could be considered a victory for both factions, as the UNSC was able to destroy the Type 72 surface-to-air cannon and open up a gap large enough for their frigates to advance on Truth's fleet. However, the Covenant forces had managed to stall the UNSC advance long enough for Truth to be prepared to open the portal to the Ark, which allowed his fleet to slip away. At the end of the day, this battle was still crucial in allowing UNSC forces to take part in the Battle of Installation 00, which would ultimately culminate in the end of the Human Covenant War. This battle also represents one of the final major engagements of the Battle of Earth, which began with the Prophet of Regret's assault on the UNSC home fleet in orbit over humanity's homeworld. If you'd like to learn about what this space battle over Earth looked like on October 20th, 2552, I'll leave a link in the upper right-hand corner to my battle analysis on that. And if you have any other engagements you'd like to see covered in future episodes of Battle Analysis, you can let me know down below in the comments. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.